So now we're actually like clustering in our point cloud into different kind of like areas. So we can see here that this is actually like a, a really nice area that it has uh, that it has clusters. Hello guys and welcome to a new video in this computer vision tutorial. So in this video here, we're going to talk about some of the basic operations that we can do on point clouds um, in the Open 3D library. But first of all, remember to join the Discord server. I'll link to it down in the description here. You can come chat with us about computer vision, deep learning, AI, and so on. You can also become a member of the channel uh, for a small monthly fee, or if you need some help with some of your projects and you have some problems, uh, you can go become a member of the channel and I can try to help you out with some of your problems. So thank you guys. So in this video here, we're just going to go straight into the Jupyter Notebook here. So I'm just going to go over the different kind of blocks of code that we had in the last video. So first of all, we had, we just imported these different kind of modules that we're using with OM for D, NumPy and so on. And then we have this point cloud here that we wanted to visualize. So we're just using uh, the examples that were provided by OpenSV. So we're looking at some of those tutorials, how we can actually like open up a point cloud from a file, how we can visualize it with Open4D, and then how we can do actual operations on our point cloud, either to like then downsample it, estimate the, no the normals of each of the individual points in our point cloud and so on. So here we are visualizing our point cloud. We can see that this is a really nice representation um, of the environment here by just having this point cloud that we can then do um, operations on. In the last video, we started off with downsampling our actual like, point cloud. So we went from this point cloud up here to this point cloud down here by using a voxel downsampling. I talked about that in that video. So if you want to know like what, what is the, like the idea behind voxel downsampling, definitely go check those videos out. It will be in this, uh, in the same tutorial as this video here. So then we downsample our point cloud. We can still see that we have a nice representation of our actual like point cloud. We can still see we have a chair here. We have like some kind of like surface here. We have still have the painting or like um, the thing up here at the wall. We have the floor, wall, and so on. So then we did the normal estimation for each of the individual points on our downsampled point cloud. So as we can see down here, we actually like just have these normals. So we just add more information to each of the individual points in our point cloud. So we can actually like use that to do segmentation, post estimation, and so on for the different kind of updates in our scene, and also how we can just reconstruct our scene uh, from images and point clouds. So we have these uh, normals here, which will just be perpendicular to each of the individual points in our point cloud, but we need to estimate those. So we can see here at the wall, they're just like uh, perpendicular to the wall here. All of the uh, normals is just pointing out because we have this flat surface, surface here um, at the wall, the same goes for uh, like the painting here sometimes and also the floor, but we can see here around the chair, there's a lot of different kind of like normals going different directions because th those are just like uh, perpendicular to the plane um, for each of the individual points in our point cloud. So we went through that in the last video, we also saw how we can access each of the estimated no uh, vector normals, uh, like the vertex normals, so all the normals in our point cloud just that we just estimated, how we can get those out, convert it to a NumPy array, for example, and then we can do operations on that later on to actually like try to do post post estimation or segmentation of different kind of objects or like segmentation segmentation of a whole scene uh, by just using point cloud normals and, and all that information. So in this video here, we're just going to go over a bit more basic operations that we can do. So we could either like crop our point cloud, let's say we have a really large point cloud of our environment. And then we only need like a specific region of interest that we want to do some processing on. So let's say we have this whole uh, whole environment here with the chair and we want to like post estimate or we want to estimate the pose of the chair. So we want to know the position and we also want to know the orientation of the chair. Then it doesn't really matter about all the information, all the other information we have um, in our point cloud. We can just crop out that chair and then we can do all, all operations only on that chair. So that will reduce the points in our point cloud and in our processing processing algorithms which will speed up the process um, even more and we can when we just cut it more down we have small point clouds to work with and only we only have information that we actually like need then we can do a lot of uh, different kind of stuff like real-time processing of point clouds doing post estimation in real time and, and so on so there's a lot of advantages by downsampling our point clouds and reducing it to uh, as little points as possible or like as few points as possible so here we can actually crop our point cloud again we're just going to use these, this uh, draw geometries. We'll just draw the actual like, point cloud after we've done our processing. But here we can actually see we need to load in a polygon uh, volume here and use it to crop the original point cloud. So here we're just going to have this volume which we set equal to O3D dot visualization. And then we have this function here, read selection polygon volume. 
and then we actually like, need to specify a JSON file here for uh, like the region or like the volume that we want to crop out. And then we can just use um, this function here, vault.crop point cloud. We pass in the point cloud where we actually like, want to, uh, like the area that we want to uh, to crop out of that uh, of that point cloud. So this will be our full point cloud. And then this ball here will be the actual like, region that we're interested in. And th in, the, in this example here, it will be our chair that we want to crop out from our point cloud. Then we actually like, just store in this variable chair and we're just going to visualize it with drawer geometries. If I hit shift into here, it will run the program. And now we can see we actually like, have segmented out all the points here uh, for our chairs. So all the other information we had in our scene and in our point cloud is now like cropped away or we have cropped out this chair because this is the only thing that we want to do operations on, let's say that. And we want to estimate the pose of this uh, chair, for example, in the scene. So we've reduced our point cloud and we're only focusing on the region of interest uh, that we have. So here we can see read selection polygon volume, uh, volume reads a JSON file that specifies polygon selection area. Uh, and it fills out points, only the chair remains. So this is just the way how we specify like what we actually like, want to crop out from our image. And in this example, uh, we want to crop out the chair. We can also paint the point cloud. So now we have cropped out the point cloud. Now we can do all different kind of operations on that specific point cloud that we have cropped out. And now we're just going to go through the, this example here where we're just going to like paint um, paint the, the point cloud here of the chair with a uniform color. So to get an actual like, uniform color, we're just going to call this uh, paint, uh, like the, this paint uniform color. And then we just specify the values here for our like uniform distribution of our colors that we want. And then it will actually like, just draw the chair with these uh, values that it will just it will just generate from a uniform distribution with these parameters here. Then we just use draw geometries again, the exact same function as in all the other examples. So if I, if I hit shift into here, we can actually like see we get this, uh, we're just painting the chair here like yellow or like some kind of gold. Um, and this is just how we do it. We could like take an arbitrary color. We could also specify the exact color that we want to. But in this, in this example here, we just take a uniform color with these, uh, with these values here. So that is one example of operations that we can do uh, on our actual like, point cloud. We can also do some like, for example, like point cloud distances, how we can get the distance from, from one point to another point. Like, so we specify two points in our point cloud, and then we want to measure the distance between those two. It can be used for a lot of different kind of real life um, applications. Like let's say we want to find the distance between like two objects in a room, then we can actually like, use this point cloud distance to just have uh, a detection of one of the objects or like a point in the point cloud for that object and the other object. And then we can actually like just compute the point cloud distance with this function um, as I'm going to show you here. But paint uniform color here, it paints all the points to a uniform color. The color space is an RGB space and then we need to specify it in this range here. So instead of one to 255, we have normalized the values. So it will be in the range of zero to one. And then we just have a uniform color, which means that we just take um, we just take the same color and paint it in, in that color, specified in this range here in RGB. So here we have the point cloud distance. So OM3D provides this the, this method here compute point cloud distance to compute the distance from a source point to a target point as I just talked about, and then it compute for each point in the source point uh, source point cloud the, dist uh, the distance to the closest point in the target point cloud. So we actually need to specify like some kind of like area. Uh, which is our, our start and our target. And then we just have the two closest points to that. And that will be the distance. So in the example below here, we use the function to compute the difference between two point clouds. Note that this method could also be used to compute uh, the chamber distance between two point clouds. So first of all, we need to uh, read in our point cloud. So we're going to have this fragment point cloud that we're going to use, uh, load in. And then again, we need to uh, crop out our point cloud, which will be our chair. So we're actually just going to do the exact same thing as we did up in the top. But now we have actually like play around and, and, and play around with these values here. So we need to like just read them in again, do operations with them, and then how to actually get the distance between, be between two point clouds, because now we actually like have two point clouds. We have the original point cloud, and then we have the chair cropped out of that original point cloud. So now we can actually get all the distances between these two point clouds. And then we just use this function as I just read up here, compute point cloud distance, and we just pass in the chair. So then it will actually just find, find the closest point or like the distance 
from the close point in this um, in this um, in this point cloud here to the chair point cloud that we cropped out from the original one. Then we're just going to convert the distances to a NumPy array, and then we can say like where the distance is, is greater than 0 0.5, it will actually like be the index. And then we can just go in and select by index in the point cloud uh, with this index here. So if our if our point in our point cloud is actually like greater than some uh, threshold that we set up here, then we're actually like going to take that index and select that in our actual like uh, or in the original point cloud. Then we actually like have this point cloud without the chair, and then we just draw the GOM trees here. So we have the original point cloud, then we crop out the point clouds, so we have two point clouds. Then we try to find the distances between those two point clouds or like the points inside of that point cloud. And then we can then use the indexes by having this threshold value here to actually like subtract, um, so subtract those points in our original point cloud. So we actually like crop it out and then we subtract it from the original one just to like remove it in the scene. So I hit shift enter and it will just uh, crop out or like it will just subtract this um, this chair here or all the points in our point clouds from the chair in the original one. So this is how we can remove like objects in our scene for example uh, with point clouds if we have two point clouds. It can be used for a lot of different kind of things. Um, things too. We can also use the distances to, to just see uh, different kind of things, um, things as well. So just to show you that we can play around with this first whole value. So now we have 0 0.01. So let's just say we have this distance here. We want the distance to be greater than 0 uh, 0 like 0.2 here. So this actually means that our distance need to be greater than this value here. If, uh, or like if, if, it's, if it's greater than this value here, we consider this as the chair. And then we want to actually subtract that from our original point cloud. So if I run it now here, we can see that we have a greater area here that we actually subtract uh, subtract from the original point cloud because now the dist now we allow the distances to be greater between the two points in our point cloud so we will get a larger error so we need to play around with this parameter here as well so like the distances but this is a pretty good um default value here with these differences um at least if we have like at, at a fairly dense point cloud as we have in this example here if we have, for example, like uh, done voxel downsampling on a point cloud, first of all, we probably need to like have a higher threshold value here um, instead. But in the in this original point cloud, we have a really dense point cloud where the distance between the points is is not that great. So for the rest of the notebook here, I'm just going to go over the blocks of code that we have, and then we can just see like what operations can we actually like do and what they uh, what did what they actually like do. So here we're just going to create some bounding values. So the point cloud geometry type has bounding values as all other uh, geometry types in Open3D. And then we can see here we have this axis aligned boundary box and an orientated boundary box. So now we can actually like create boundary boxes around our objects in from our point clouds. So now we actually like have this uh, chair, we know we have this chair point cloud and then we can actually like just uh, specify that as an object. So in this example, our object is a chair and then we can create a boundary box or like a 3D boundary box around that chair. Uh, with these um, implemented functions here in Open3D as well. So this is actually like really nice to do uh, 3D object detections um, and so on when we have this information or like we have our point clouds because we have the X, Y value and then we also have the depth to our object. So instead of, we, we, we're calling used to like just doing 2D, uh, 2D detections of different kind of objects, but when we have these point clouds, we can actually like create bounding volume, volumes, which is 3D bounding boxes. So if you just run it here, we can see we get this these bounding boxes here around the chair. We can see we both get this uh, axis aligned bounding box. So the bounding box will just be aligned with the axes, but we also have the orientated bounding box. So we have this red bounding box here, which is actually like orientated um, as the chair is in the scene. So we can use this for a lot of different kind of things, object detection in 3D space. So the next thing here is convex hull. So the convex hull here of a point cloud is the smallest convex set to contain uh, that contains all the points here. We can see we have this compute convex hole. So all of these things is just we have a point cloud. We want to do some operations with them. We just use the functions from uh, OM3D, and then it just computes the convex hole here of a point cloud. And we can see the, inf inf uh, the implementation here as well. So if we go down here, just run the uh, run the code. So first of all, we're going to sample some po uh, points from a po uh, Poisson. Uh, distribution we can sample like 2000 points here or we can specify some other different kind of things we're going to get this bunny mesh and then we're just going to compute the convex hull here for our original point cloud we're going to set up some different kind of things like create a triangle mesh 
we're going to talk about meshes later on in other videos we're just going to have a uniform color and then we're going to draw our geometries so if you just run the program here we can see we have uh, this uh, get bunny mess so this will be this video uh, like this function here so get bunny mess and then we sample 2000 points for this bunny here from a Poisson distribution and then we can then we can actually compute the convex holes here um, as we can see so all of these lines that we can see um, within all of these points it is actually like the convex holes so this is another operations that we can do on our point clouds can be used for a lot of different kind of things like when we're creating meshes um, and so on we also have some dns uh, dbn uh, can dbsn can clustering so given a point cloud here from a depth sensor we want to group local point cloud clusters together for this purpose we can use this cluster algorithm from open 3 and we see here that the algorithm is implemented in cluster uh, and requires two parameters so we have eps defines the distance to neighbors in a cluster and a minimum points defines the minimum number of points required to from a cluster so here the function here it returns labels where the label minus one indicates noise so this is actually like how we can do clustering on our point cloud so we actually just need to uh, to use this algorithm here that is implemented in open3d and then we can actually like do clustering as well so we're going to read down point cloud we're going to have this verbosity con uh, context manager we set up these different kind of parameters so we have this eps so the distance between the neighbors to a cluster and then we also have the minimum points and print progress so while we actually like doing this we want to print out the progress that we're doing we need we know where we have this max label so it will just be the maximum values or like the maximum uh, we take all the uh, labels and then we just take the max values because we know that minus one just indicates that it is noise and we don't really care uh, care about that we set up some colors here and then we just visualize it down here um, at the bottom four clusters so now we can actually see here we first of all we need to pre-compute the neighbors we're done computing uh, pre-computing the neighbors and then we actually like, compute the clusters so now we're actually like, clustering in our point cloud into different kind of like areas so we can see here that this is actually like a, a really nice area that it has uh, that it has clusters so all of this in uh, all of this here inside is actually like cl a cluster to be the same cluster and then we can see some information out here so there's a difference between the points here that we have because we have these like uh, pill pillars here in between these are clustered in, as in the room and then we can see here we have different clusters so there's a lot of space between these points here in these two point clouds or in this point cloud so this will be a segment uh, like it will be one cluster another cluster a third cluster and then th all of these points here in green is actually like in the same cluster because the distance between the points is uh, is not greater than some threshold that that we set up so this is how we can do clustering we can do it on a lot of other different kind of things you can play around with the parameters see like if you want to like for example cluster out let's say we only want to cluster out the chair so the chair should be one object or like one cluster for itself we could probably do that but we might have some problems like for example down here uh, with the legs of the chair it fairly looks like the same as the floor and the distance between the points and the point cloud um, and so on is not that great so the second last thing that we're going to go through in this video here is plane segmentation again we can just read it here we're just going to segmentate out planes in our actual like point cloud and before we're doing that we're actually using the ransack to fill out some of the noise in our point cloud uh, before we're actually like doing segmentation and that is really important that we use ransack uh, before that we're going to go into more detail like how we can use these functions how what it actually like does and how these algorithms is implemented later on but in this video here i just want to show these operations that we can actually like do on the point cloud we're going to create some projects where we're going to use these functions more in depth and we're going to like have our actual like own own um, own environments that we're going to reconstruct do segmentation clustering and so on so here we're just reading in the point cloud again we're segmentating out the different kind of planes in our point cloud so i'm just going to run here we can see we have this uh, top one top here point cloud here so we have a lamp here that we have actually like that we have actually like segmented so right now we're looking at planes we're segmentating out planes in our image so we can see that that this background wall here is actually like segmented out um, as the same segment which is really nice we have some errors here in between which is actually like classified as gray so it couldn't uh, it couldn't segmentate those we have like this lamp here is also really nice we can see even that it is curved it's still segmented as the same a kind of like object or the same segment and we can see all the details that we get in this painting here on the wall by using this uh, segmentation here as well. So this is actually like really cool. We can use it for a lot of different kind of things. 
and you can actually just use it with one function. We just have our point cloud. We just pass in segment segment plane. It will do everything for us. We will get the plane model and also the inlier. So the inlier was the gray, uh, gray pixel values and so on. We just draw it down here. So we have our inlier point cloud, outlier point cloud, and then we just visualize it here with draw geometries. So this is just how we can visualize it. All of the all of the computation is done inside of this segment plane where we just set up a distance threshold, ransack parameters. So like how many like we have the, this value here for like n for our ransack. So we can go up here and read what that is. So it defines the number of points that are randomly sampled to estimate a plane. So we use three in this example and also the number of iterations that we want to run this through. And the last thing that we're going to look at in this video is hidden point removal. So imagine you want to render a point cloud here for a given viewpoint, but points from the background lead into the foreground because they're not like occluded by other points. So for this purpose here, we can actually like apply a hidden point removal algorithm. So if the points is actually like uh, hidden, we can remove them and so on as we're going to see. So first of all here, we're just going to convert this mesh uh, to a point cloud and then we're going to estimate the dimensions of it. So we're going to load in this uh, armadillo mesh. We're going to sample the points here again from a Poisson distribution with 5,000 points. Then we can go in here and actually like normalize it from uh, the linear algebra module inside of NumPy. Then we get the maximum bound here and also the minimum bound. So we can actually like get the dimensions or like estimate the dimensions of this point cloud or mesh that we have. We're just going to visualize it. And if, if I had shift into here, we're just going to load up this point cloud that we created of this armadillo. And we'll also, so we have actually converted this mesh to a point cloud instead. So now the idea behind hidden point removal is that when we actually look at, look at our point cloud from one specific view, so we need to define some parameters for, uh, for our hidden point removal. So let's say we have a camera where we're looking at some object then we can't see the object like 360 degrees around because our camera will be fixed at some position and it will only be able to see some points of that object in our scene. So this is this is actually like what this uh, what this here does. So we need to define some parameters for our hidden point removal. We have our camera zero zero and the diameter, and then our radius will be our diameter times hundred. So now we get now we need to get all the points that are visible from the viewpoint. So we have a camera and we want to get all the points from our object that we're actually like able to see from our camera because when we have this full point cloud, we can't see 360 degrees around it with a camera from a, a fixed, fixed position. But now we want to get all the points that we can actually like see from our camera. So we go down here, we get it, we, we go down, take our point cloud, hidden point removal, we specify the camera and also the radius. So this is basically just a viewpoint that we want to get these, um, these point clouds from or like the points that we're able to see. And then we're just going to visualize the results again by this PT map. So we'll get this PT map, which will just uh, will just like contain all the indexes for the points that we can actually like, see from our camera in the original point cloud. And the original point cloud in this example was this armadillo up here. So again, we're just going to have the point cloud set that equal to what we can actually like, see, and we're just going to visualize it. So if I hit shift into here, now we can see that if we look at this armadillo with a camera from the back, we're only able to see these points. Like we're not able to see any points in in like in front of the armadillo here. So like the nose, uh, the the, for, the like the foreground of the hands, the ears, and stuff like that. We're not able to see that when we have this fixed position of our camera uh, behind. This can be used for a lot of different kind of things, and this is like often the case in real life applications, where it's just it's just not possible to see all points. Um, from a camera view or like a specific camera view, we could move the camera around and get more information about that point cloud. But this can be used for a lot of different kind of things, like for example, bin picking applications and so on, where we just have a camera. We want to look at the objects, create a, a 3D environment or like a 3D uh, representation with a point cloud of these different kind of objects and then do operations on those. So thank you guys for watching this video here and remember to hit the subscribe button and bell notification under the video. And also like this video here if you like the content and you want more in the future. I'm just really excited for this library here with Open3D. We can do a lot of different kind of things. It's just important for me that we, first of all, uh, we should know like what this library here is actually like, capable of, how we can load in a point cloud, do different kinds of operations on it. We can go through some of these uh, tutorial examples here. And then later on, we're going to create some really nice projects where we're going to use all of these things here uh, from scratch and actually like, create our own 
point cloud, reconstruct the environment and so on. So I'll link to one of the other tutorials I have on my channel up here or else on the CNA Twitter guys. Bye for now.